Hey, so welcome back to um, part two of the motion tutorial, creating a intro. In part two, what we're going to do is we're going to add sound to what we created in part one. If you haven't seen part one, um, I'll put a link in the description and I'll put a link on the screen right now. But basically part one is text rotating in, highlight parts going across it, so it's like a light across it, and then the text sort of disperses, rotates out, and fades out as well. Um, so we're going to add text, uh, sorry, sorry, sound. Now there's not a lot of videos on our adding sound to stuff in motion, that's because motion is not the greatest for manipulating sound files and adding sound, but you can do sort of basic things. Um, I would generally do it in FCPX afterwards, so if you've got another program, think about using another program, but if not, then use motion. And um, I'll try to show you how right now. Right, so the first thing I want to do is um, I want to add sort of a whoosh noise or a noise as this light part goes across our text and then the second one comes back across. I want to add a noise to emphasize that. So I'm going to go to my file browser. Now, if you haven't got noises, if you haven't got sounds, then just Google sounds the sounds that you want and you will generally find them and I'm going to add a, um, a whoosh from this whoosh pack right here so I'm going to select it there like that and right away it starts playing in our preview pane so just pause it there because that's that's one of the annoying things about this and then I'm going to drag and drop it into our layers pane right here and it'll start playing again so I'm going to pause it again now you notice it goes where I had my timeline so I'm just going to drag it across You'll also notice it's not actually in my editable timeline down here. It's only just below my preview pane here. And all I can do with it at the moment is move it left and right, and I can't do much else with it. So the way we get to edit it, firstly, I want to look at it in my layers pane. So I'll go to my audio of my layers pane, and it's right here. And then I go to the bottom right-hand corner of my program screen or app screen, and I click Show Hide Audio Timeline. And this will open up um, sort of so you can see the WAV files if you like. And if I play it along, it will just play the noises, play the sounds. That come up in the timeline. Now, the sound that I want, I want this one right here because it's a little bit, this one here. It's a little bit longer, so that's the sort of whoosh that I want. Now, to get it, there's a few ways I can um, edit this clip. I can scroll to the start of my clip, highlight, hover over the start, over the start of my clip, sound file, and just so I get the um, so I get the bracket. Left click and drag it along to the start where I want it. So that's the start that I want it. And likewise, you notice that this clip is quite long. If I go to my file browser here on the left hand side, it will tell me how long in duration it is. And it's 22 seconds long. Pause it again. Like I said, it keeps playing, which is annoying. Um, so instead of moving it along and then dragging the bracket down the way, I'm just going to select in my um, timeline where I want it. Make sure it's selected. And then go to Edit and Split. Those of you that use FCPX, you'll Remember in FCPX, it's Command and B to break something. I don't know why they don't just do it in motion. So then I'm going to select the part, the one that I don't want here in my timeline. And it shows up here in my um, audio layers. I'm just going to click backspace and it will delete it. Now I'm going to go along in my timeline and see where the light and my preview pane, where it starts. And I'm going to drag my sound file to where I want it to match up with the file here. And that's roughly where I want it. So if I click play to um, to see where we're at. You notice the second one comes in, but there's no sound. So get in my timeline to where the second one comes in. Highlight my um, sound file and just press Command D. And it would duplicate it and I'm going to drag it along in my timeline to where the second one comes in. Now if I play it, I will have two. And that's exactly as I want it. Now you notice in this um, this mask copy up here, it's got um, vertical lines across. And the reason that is, is because in my layers pane here, I've got it locked, my mask locked. So if I unlock it, 
you notice the lines across it move are uh, remove and if I lock it the lines in there move and that's just so if I accidentally click and grab it it doesn't move anywhere and I'm gonna do exactly the same with my two audio files down here cool so now if I try and move them they don't move now what I'm gonna to want to do is go to the start of my um, my intro and add a noise that sort of represents this coming in and then the text going out again um, so I've got this futuristic sound here so I'm gonna pause it and drag and drop it into my audio layers pane right there and that's where it is and as always it starts playing now if I let this play through there's a few things that's gonna happen right Firstly, it's going to be the same volume as this whoosh pack here. So I'm going to want to edit the volume so you can actually hear the two lines going across. And secondly, I'm going to want to split it again at the end here so it goes out. So first and foremost, selecting my timeline where I want to split it. Go to edit, split, get the second part that I don't want, backspace to delete. Now what I want to do is sort of fade in and fade this out. Now there's a way I can do it using my library and go into my behaviors and go into my um, audio in and out. Now if I click apply, it will attra attach itself to this futuristic sound effect. If I went to my inspector and behaviors, there's my fade in and fade out. So because it's the start of the sound, it already fades in, if that makes sense. So on the way out, if I go to my fade out time here, and I drag it right to the top, right here, I drag it right to the top, it will fade out to an extent. So now if I play it through, it will fade in. And it also fades out, but it doesn't fade out the best. So let me get rid of this, so I'm just showing you one way, and then I'm gonna keyframe it in. So I've got rid of my behavior that fades in and fade out. First and foremost, what I want to do is select my futuristic sound here in my layers, audio layers, and I'm gonna turn down the volume with this little slider here. I'm gonna turn it down to minus five. I'm gonna play it through just near the whooshes and see, see what it does because I couldn't hear them before. A little bit better, but what I wanna do is turn these whooshes up to Emphasize them a little bit more. Unlock them by clicking the locks. Drag them up to four. Lock them again, so I can't accidentally move them. And then listen to the preview of that. Much better, much happier. I could even turn the futuristic sound effect down to minus 12 and see what happens there. Much happier with that but it still finishes quite promptly. So what I want to do is fade it out. So I'm gonna show you, I don't need to fade it in because it starts with a fade in, but I'm going to show you, show you how to fade it in anyway using keyframes as a demonstration. So I'm gonna select it in my timeline or in my audio layers here, and then I'm gonna to go to my inspector and select audio track. On the tab here, select audio track, and it shows me the current level of my volume. This is how I'm gonna add keyframes. But before I do that, I want to check out my keyframe editor. So next to our show hide audio timeline, there's a show hide keyframe editor. So we need to click it and it opens up this extra timeline, but it's actually a keyframe editor. So if I go to the start of my timeline with my futuristic sound effect selected and click add keyframe, move along into my time timeline, add another keyframe, move along in my timeline again, add another keyframe, and then move to the end of my timeline and add another keyframe on that sound effect, on this sound effect. Now I can manipulate the keyframes using the keyframe editor here. So I want it to go up in sound, and if you notice to the right, if I click and drag and drop this, to the right of it I've got the time code where it edits it, and the actual sound at the moment it says minus three in the brackets to the right hand side of the keyframe dot like i said complicated i know but bear with me so i'm going to drag it up to minus naught sorry minus 
minus four. Drag it up here to minus four so it stays the same. And drag these ends out so they're as low as they can go. And likewise with this one, low as it can go. So now the sound will come in, go up to minus four here, stay at minus four all the way to here, and then go down to minus six so it'll fade out there. So you can even drag them. So I'm manipulating the keyframes to change where the sound comes in and goes out. Click play now. And the sound stops and it fades out, fades in as we so Like I said, not the easiest and not the most user friendly. However, it can be done and you can manipulate um, quite a bit with the sound effects. If you have any questions, any problems, please leave them in the comments below and I will um, I'll try my best to answer them. But yeah, consider using something different for your sounds. But if you've got nothing else, then, um, then Motion 5 does do the trick. Thanks a lot for watching. Catch you all later.